Hey everybody, my name is Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2021 Chevrolet Trailblazer. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver. So these new Trailblazers seem like they're kind of a fun compact SUV and if it were me I would want a way to be able to carry around accessories things like a bike rack something like that uh, that way I could free up some space on the inside of my vehicle and the hitch is going to allow us to do just that so I will say probably my favorite thing about this hitch is the way it's going to look on the back of the trailblazer uh, for the most part it's completely hidden really the only thing you're going to be able to see is a receiver tube opening so it's really going to do a great job of you know, maintaining that factory appearance. And it's also gonna sit up nice and tight against the bottom of our vehicle, which ground clearance uh, is always a bonus. It is going to have an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And that's because it is a class one hitch. It does have a reinforced collar for extra strength. And I personally think the collar makes it look a little bit better too, uh, almost more complete in my opinion. It's going to have the half inch size pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can grab it right here at e-trailer. And it is going to have loop style safety chain openings, which are somewhat big and relatively open. So we should be able to use pretty much any size hook that we might have. Now, as far as hitches weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 200 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to two bike racks, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 2,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always suggest, never a bad idea, just to grab your Chevy's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your trailblazer can pull out much weight safely. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories will work best. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 12 and a half inches. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's going to be about five inches. You can use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So at the end of the day, a hitch that not only looks good, but is going to allow you to get the job done. Now, as far as the installation goes, you do have to remove the rear fascia here, and that's because the hitch does sit behind it. It's really not too complicated. However, I will say there's a lot of plastic fasteners and everything's put together pretty tight. So you definitely wanna be patient and use a little finesse. But with that being said, I will show you a couple tricks and tips that I use to make that process go a little bit smoother. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our trailblazer and we are going to need to remove our fascia and that's because the hitch does uh, get mounted up behind that. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is come here on the side and remove this plastic wheel well trim here. So the way to get this off can be a little tricky. Uh, behind it, there's some plastic push pin type fasteners. That's securing this plastic portion to the actual body of our vehicle. And what we're gonna need to do is just kind of work it off. So what I like to do is just kind of grab the whole edge of it, kind of just work it a little bit to help loosen it up uh, some. So these fasteners can be kind of brittle, especially in cold weather. So I'm gonna kind of loosen it up. And then we're just going to start to pry from one end. I'm gonna do this carefully. And so you can kind of see that's one fastener there. And there's a bunch of those throughout this whole thing. So I'm gonna take a plastic trim tool or something similar. And I'm gonna kind of try to work behind them, kind of one by one. And just very carefully try to get this piece removed here. So once we have this removed, we can set it to the side. 
If any of these did uh, get stuck in there, just come back and work those out as well. So once you get the ones that were stuck in there removed, you can take them and just slide them back into place. With that trim piece out of the way, it's gonna expose a seven millimeter screw right here. It is the one close to the front of the vehicle and uh, up top here. So I'll grab my seven millimeter socket and pull that out. Once we have this one removed, we can come here to the edge of our wheel wall liner and pull out some fasteners there as well. So there's gonna be three fasteners along the edge and we're gonna take a T15 Torx bit to get those removed. Now underneath the vehicle, right here at the corner, we're gonna have another T15 Torx bit uh, screw here. We'll pull that out. And then if you kind of follow this edge a little ways, we're gonna have two push pin style fasteners. So way to get these out, again, you can take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver, pry underneath the head and pull the whole thing out. So now if you open up our hatch along this edge here, down at the bottom, we're gonna have a T15 uh, fastener. So we'll pull that out. If you look up here by our tail lights, we're gonna have two little uh, access doors here. You could take a pick like this or flathead screwdriver, what do you, whatever you got. Just kind of pop that open. And behind there, we're gonna have two more T15 fasteners. Now what we need to do is actually remove our tail light. Now these are in here very tight. And so you might have to take a plastic trim tool and kind of do some prying around the edge very carefully. So what I did is just use some painter's tape, wrapped it all around. Um, that way we don't have to worry about scratching up the paint or anything. Now the light, what it's gonna do is come out straight back. There's some uh, alignment pins in here that are keeping it in position and aligned and they're really tight and difficult to uh, get released. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of work it side to side a little bit and just try to get everything a little loose to make it a little more manageable. So you can kind of shake it around. Uh, like I said, you can take a trim tool and just very carefully just kind of pry on it just a little bit. Just get a little bit of movement going and uh, that should kind of help loosen everything up a little bit. You want to be careful when you're doing this so you don't want to pry super hard, break the tail light, or something like that. So I'm just doing this strictly to kind of get everything moving a little bit. Sometimes it helps too to take the palm of your hand and just kind of hit it forward like that, or I'm sorry, rearward. And it should release. So if you flip it over, you can see those were the pens uh, that I mentioned. And now that we have it out, we can get it disconnected. So we're gonna have three connectors. These are just quarter turns. We're just gonna rotate them a quarter turn. This one actually has a plug you can pull out. I'll just push down on the center there. Disconnect it. And this one is a quarter turn as well. And then if we look, there'll just be a little keeper that's holding the wires. Just pull the wires from those. The tail light will be free. We'll set it off to the side. Now with an extra set of hands, we can remove our fascia and Again, I put some tape here along the seams. That way we don't have to worry about it getting scratched. 
But what you're gonna do is kind of make sure your wheel aligner is pulled away from it. You can grab this corner and just gently pull towards you. It's gonna release a couple of clips and work our way towards the tail light pocket here. Once we have it free, you don't want to pull back too fast. We might have some electrical connectors. In our case, we have one on each side, and they're going to be set up the same way. Just going to push back on the red retaining clip, push down in the center, and disconnect it. Now we can go ahead and set our fascia off to the side so we're safe. So now if we come back to these connectors, these are actually going to be uh, fastened to our bumper beam, which we will be removing. So we need to release these. Again, get a trim tool or a screwdriver. Just pry up on them. At this point, we can grab a utility knife. And what we're going to need to do on our bumper beam here, where it's attached to the body of our vehicle, you can see that there's a, a bead of sealer there. And since we're removing the bumper beam, it's gonna be a little bit easier to get off if we take our utility knife and just kind of score that. It's gonna help separate that uh, sealer there from the body of our vehicle and the bumper beam. So now we can remove the three nuts from each side of our bumper beam. I'm gonna take a 15 millimeter socket and get those pulled off. So once you have all the nuts removed, you can kind of peel your bumper beam off and set it to the side. Now we need to do is come back with a scraper and all this extra sealer here, we want to remove that. That way it's nice and flat. Uh, that way when we put our hitch here, there's not gonna be any interference or uh, anything causing it to sit on level, anything like that. So being said, I'll just grab my scraper and remove this extra sealer. And since our bumper beam is gonna kind of sandwich our hitch, you wanna make sure that this surface is nice and clean as well. Now at the next set of hands, we can take our hitch, We're going to line it up. And then we can grab our bumper beam and sandwich it together. Then we're going to take our factory hardware, these nuts, and we're just going to get these started hand tight. So now before we actually completely tighten this down, kind of just a quick tech tip. So if you look at our bumper beam, you can kind of see where the paint's missing, where the nuts originally were seated. And so I'm just going to make sure everything's lined back up like that. You kind of hold them in that position. Come back. Just get them hand tight with your tool. Get a little more leverage on it. Now that we have it where we want it, we'll come back with our impact and just snug everything up. Once everything's snug, you want to come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in the instructions. Now we can move over here to our fascia and we will need to trim just a really small portion out of the bottom side of it um, to clear the hitch. There's instructions or a diagram rather in your instructions and they give you some measurements you can follow. So I went ahead and marked it out here. Um, I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to cut this out. It's pretty thin plastic though. You could probably use a pair of snips or utility knife, something like that. And just to be on the safe side too, you wanna kind of feel behind there, make sure there's not any wires or anything uh, of importance under there. So we're all clear. Go ahead, take my Dremel and cut this out. You have that out, you can kind of 
come back and remove any of those burred up edges with a hand file or something similar. Now that our bumper's cut, we can reinstall it the opposite way. You wanna make sure to plug in any of your electrical connectors that you may have disconnected. And we're just gonna line this back up and just start to push it back into place. Just kind of a quick tech tip, when you're gonna put this back together, this trim piece, you can see at the bottom of it, there's kind of an edge there. I'm gonna put that in first, and then kind of lean it in, get everything lined up. And you can kind of push it in as one whole piece. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 Chevy Trailblazer.